So, um, I'm here at .go, and my name's Andrew Durand, and I'm on the Go team, and I'm talking to my friend and colleague, Brad Fitzpatrick. I'm also on the Go team. Um, and I just wanted to ask Brad a few questions about Go and his experience. So, the first question is, what was the first Go program you ever wrote? I think the first useful program that I tried to write was, um, I was working on, I was on the Android team at that time, and we were trying to sync all of our Android source code to some NFS server so it could be indexed by some like code search ending system that we had. But our sync was so slow because our sync was only like doing one file or one directory mm -hmm. at a time. So I thought, I'll use Go routines. And I just decided to do this massive Go routine bomb that for every directory it did a Go routine and for every file it did a Go routine and did a copy. And um, <laughs> it kept like crashing my whole machine. And so I, I called Russ Cox up and uh, <laughs> or I sent him an email being like, Go socks. You know, I didn't say Go socks, but I was like, I try to run my Go program and my whole computer crashes. <laughs> and he came over and it turned out I had like, you know, 20,000 kernel threads like trying to do copies and stuff. So I didn't really know how to use Go routines yet. Yeah, yeah. But did you end up making it work? Yeah, it worked. Yeah, yeah. Did they use it for a while? It was actually kind of impressive even then in what was like 2009 or 2010, early 2010, that um, all the profiling stuff was like still pretty good. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, we actually had the PPROF stuff in almost from the beginning. So that's cool. Uh, the second question is what is the most, what's the, sorry, what's your favorite bug? Favorite bug? Um, I mostly deal with HTTP bugs, but I, th I think the, the cutest bug that I ever dealt with was um, the IOUtil package has uh, this discard thing, which is kind of like the dev null. It's a, it's a writer that if you just want to get rid of something, uh, you just IO copy to dev null or whatever. But uh, it, has a, it has to have this buffer behind the scenes that, uh, to like write into as the destination for write. And so originally, we just had one buffer that everyone shared. But then when uh, Dimitri did the race detector, then it, everyone writing to that thing, even though we didn't care about the results, still tripped up the race detector. So we had to have different buffers that were shared. But anyway, there was a, a subtle bug where with the recycling of all the buffers and sharing the buffers, that it was sometimes possible to make real programs not like have different behavior because of the, the buffer thing. And it took a bunch of us looking at it a long time. And when we finally discovered like what the bug was, it was, it was just amazing. So what, we have a bunch of new tests there now. Wasn't it because you were, the, the buffer is actually used by all of the writers in the chain of writers? Yeah. And you were, or the readers rather? I, I can't remember which way it is. Yeah. No, it must be writers. It was, it was and you were doing SHA hashes. Yeah, and right. And they were so hashing, my, the, the hashes were wrong because you were yeah, sharing the buffer. The, because it was never actually like making it there or something, it was like skipping something, and the SHA-1 was being done on a buffer that didn't have the things. And yeah, I actually wrote this up for the, for the Go blog uh, in the article introducing the race detector. Because okay. this was an example of like a spurious like, race detector yeah, report. Yeah, this is a harmless bug that yeah. turned out to not be harmless. Nope. So, so that's cool. Yeah. But we have, we have good tests now. Yeah, and you know, code that works. And I think that actually uses sync pool under the scenes now to I think, yeah, nowadays it does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, and the third question is, um, what is the worst piece of code, like Go or otherwise, that you've ever written? <laughs> or otherwise. <laughs> well, all my Go code is perfect, so. Uh, <laughs> of course, of course. Of course. Um, as, as is mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, I had a lot of hilarious, I mean, I've, I've had tons of crappy code, but like the first crappy code I ever had was uh, when I was first learning to program. I, we had like one of those printers that actually like moved the head back and forth and made lots of noise. Mm -hmm. And you could tell it to print like a single letter at a time. So I wanted to make a typewriter that as I typed on the keys, like it went eh, 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 and like did each, each, each letter. So I had this like loop that was like read a single key and then I wanted to print to the printer that single key. But instead of just like doing the one line, like read a key, print that one, I had, the, all, I had like 30 if statements. Like if the character is A, print an A. If the character <laughs> is B, print a B. And then I looked at it and it like looked a little redundant, you know, because like you know, 90% of my program was the exact same if statements, and I I hadn't really understood variables yet, or I hadn't really like internalized. Like, surely there's a better way. I knew that there were variables because like I used them sometimes to read something, but I hadn't really like realized when I could use them. So I replaced that all with like a single line, and I was like, whoa. So that's what well, that, that was. That, that was some crappy code that got a little bit better. It's like 25 years ago or something now, uh, maybe more. Yeah. Well, we've come a long way. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, no problem.